Okay, let me turn this music off. Now. Am I sideways? Can you guys, am I, should I turn the way that I'm filming? Let me see. Okay. Okay. Is that better? All right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I apologize if there's any weird noises in the background. I have five kids uh, <laughs> that are here, so um, they're all occupied for the moment. Um, so thanks for coming. I'm going to go through only half showing. Can you see it now? Let me see. Should I zoom out? Is that better? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I see the chat on the bottom, so it's kind of weird. Um, okay, so this is the planner that I got um, this year because, honestly, I really like the color, um, and that was basically the extent of the information I had. Um, and then I was chatting with the creator of the planner, and she said someone with four kids was looking for um, like how people do it. So I was like, okay, let me figure out how I'm going to do it. And then that will be helpful. So the first thing that I figured out last week was that I wanted to do a checklist. And this is like the first time I ever made a checklist. So this was like way more than we could get done in a week. Um, so I'm figuring that out, but I figured like, what do I need to read aloud to my kids, to the different kids I have? Um, so I really like that. And I did that again, um, this week. And then this, I was just using like for notes. So, um, these two pages, I didn't know what I was going to do with. So that was kind of the biggest revelation is what I'll show you about those. Um, and then this space, I started writing like which books we read aloud, but as you can see by the end of the week, I was like over it, not liking it. And then I didn't use this at all. So this comes to the new stuff that I figured out. Um, so I started writing a list of which things I was going to read aloud and I highlighted my highest priority things that I like absolutely want to do this week. And I'm still figuring out here. I think this is probably too many slots. I don't think we'll get through all of that in a week. Um, but I really like having this as like sort of an overview. And so the next page is kind of the most exciting, but I'll just share it cause it's an order. Um, I figured that instead of having the schedule, I was going to do the individual books slash um, topics that I wanted my kids to cover. And I'll zoom in so you could see it better. So I did this by age. And also I was thinking if you had more than five kids, because I have a couple of friends that do, um, if you combine them, like especially if you're doing um, the CMEC or other curriculums where you have like, for example, form one, which is first through third grade could easily do that in one column. It doesn't only have to be one kid. Um, and another thing that I thought of after I finished this draft was I think what I'm going to do is like, if they have to read four chapters a week, I think I'm just going to write one, two, three, four. And then once they finish that, I can cross it off versus the whole cell. And then the other thing that I was excited about was having this instead of having to write out individual um, weekly, what's it called, overviews for each of my kids, I could just do this and then photocopy it and give it to them. So um, that was kind of the main thing that was exciting was figuring out how to use this schedule. And then the other thing, this is just like my reflection of last week, is basically we did too much school and not enough fun stuff. So um, I'll show you what I did with the next pages, which is kind of addressing that. So instead of using this for school, I decided to use it for our schedule. Um, and my kids are color coded. So if you saw the prior page, like my kindergartner is um, green. So she's the soccer practices and the soccer game. Um, and then I have their different classes and things. And this is kind of similar to, I forget what it's called, um, the schedule thing that the CMEC people use where it's got the blocks of the different academic things. Um, so instead of using it for 
solely academic. I'm also using it for basically anything that's happening during the day. So, and this doesn't have to be like a hard, you know, we're certainly going to be doing a parked day or whatever, but it gives me an idea of what time each day we might be occupied or, you know, kind of seeing the balance of the week. If we have like math class all day on Monday, then, you know, Tuesday we have a park day versus trying to shove everything onto Monday. So that I was kind of excited about that um, outlay. And then um, the timetable. Thank you. That's what it's called. So the CMEC has a timetable where you have, you know, like at nine o'clock, we're going to be reading this book. At 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing this activity. Um, so I really liked how, um, I think her name is Celeste is one of the ladies who runs the CMEC. She had, I think Italian, her kids take Italian on Thursday or something. And I thought that was really a clever way to keep track of what, um, is in your schedule, even if you're not teaching it. So I think this is going to be helpful for me. I do also have a weekly planner, um, that's not for school. It's kind of, I think it's called a life planner, but it's, laid out differently. And so I really like the blocks on this one. And so what other people do is people use this for their keeping track of lessons and things, or you could put your kids across the top or whatever. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with this. And then the other thing I'm excited about is, um, this, I'll show you what this looks like when it's blank. So you can kind of see the difference. So it normally says daily details, and then you would put the different things that you do on the day. So I decided to change it to each individual child. Um, and I'm planning instead of just writing, for example, when my kids do a math lesson, instead of writing lesson 1.1 or whatever, I'm going to be writing what, spe- Oh, sorry, my phone's falling. Ah. Um, what specifically they're doing. So I'll zoom in. Um, so for example, instead of just writing recitation, it'll say like, we did the Pledge of Allegiance or, um, you know, I don't know. I haven't written that much stuff down. Like my kids will do their science workbook. So I'll write whatever scientific lesson that they do. Um, and so this was kind of cool because I feel like you have a lot of space and you could really write anything. And then, um, my hope is to use it as a log book, um, which is another CMEC thing. It might just be a Charlotte Mason thing. I'm just kind of learning these specific terms. Um, but where you write specific notes about your children and um, like annotate how the week went, what you want to work on. And so that's why I started writing goals at the top. I wrote these out yesterday um, for each of my kids. And then um, another thought that I had was if you have specific books that you read each week or specific lessons that you do, you could put those categories under each thing like, you know, math, history, language arts, whatever. And then as you write during the week, you could write those things, um, under each header. And I think I will try that. I'm going to kind of, um, experiment as I go. And then I put these stickers across the top just for fun. Um, And then another thing that kind of happened when I was talking to um, the maker of this planner was I thought, why don't I see how my other um, planner stickers fit? And so the double header fits really well on here. And so that, oh yeah, they're so cute. I love using stickers and I feel like they're really functional here, which is like an added bonus. Um, So I did go ahead and order these header stickers for my kids and I'm going to do them without names so that... Um, it's easier to share and I don't know, it looks good. And then, um, going to figure out what to do across the top. Maybe I'll do like white out or something. Um, anyway, so that's kind of, um, the thing that I figured out over the weekend of how I want to try and use this. Um, and then I wanted to just show you guys what I have been doing so you can see like a contrast, Um, so I've been using the Erin Condren planner for like a while and I've really been wanting a change, um, because, so these are the stickers from this planner. Um, this, the cells are really small and it's really hard to fit everything in and, um, but I just didn't really know what to do with the school nest planner yet. So I feel like I'm, I might still use this just to write down like whatever lesson we do for record keeping because I already bought it. But what I like about 
this planner is I feel like there's so much more space and it's so much more like, um, useful to, you know, for example, if you go and you're talking about like last week with my sixth grader, um, we learned, uh, what is it called? Complex subjects and complex predicates. And so if you had a particular thing that your student was struggling with, you could write that down and that's like the whole beauty of the logbook. And then you could make sure that they get it. Or, um, for example, we did the Iowa basic testing and there's like a specific thing, like let's say earth science that your children haven't, you haven't covered it yet. So they don't know those concepts. You could make a note of that within the planner. And so it's serving the function of both a planner and a record keeper, and also a notebook. And so, you know, this is called the lesson planner notebook. So I feel like that really um, shines through. And I'm really excited about it. Um, And then I am experimenting with different labels. So this was another one that I had got before instead of doing it by kid, but I couldn't figure out how to make it work. So Um, Thanks for joining the live. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, Otherwise, I'll post this um, to my stories and you can rewatch it. And then I'm going to also post it to YouTube. So thanks for coming and thanks for all the hearts. See you later.